And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I like Star Trek. I don't love Star Trek. By loving Star Trek means I don't actually know how to pronounce all the different names in Star Trek, and I definitely don't remember what happened in every episode, although I've watched a lot of Star Trek in my time and enjoy it. So I'm just asking ahead of time for you uh, Trekkies out there, please forgive me for getting things wrong or saying names wrong or for not pointing out that this character is an amazing character because I may not know all that information. But I do know enough that I was certainly interested in Star Trek Frontiers. Star Trek Frontiers is a reskinning and reworking of Mage Knight the board game, which was a reworking of Mage Knight the miniatures game, but it was really completely different. Mage Knight the board game kind of was a huge surprise to the gaming community when it came out several years ago. It was designed by Vlada Shivato, uh, from who's made many great games like uh, Through the Ages that people loved and he took Mage Knight which was looked at basically as a miniature game and made a deep strategic deck building style game out of it. It was set in a fantasy world of Mage Knight. Well this one with the help of Andrew Parks uh, takes this and puts us into the world of Star Trek. So I know a lot of people are interested in it because the gameplay for Mage Knight was critically acclaimed uh, and Star Trek is a property that a lot of people like we can hope it's good, right? Well, let's take a look at some of the mechanisms of the game first. Now, I'm not going to go over every rule in this game. That's just impossible to do, really, and be succinct. I'm just going to give you kind of a general feel so you can understand how the game plays. Each player is going to control a spaceship, and this is the experience track here. We're going to keep track of the experience you get. Uh, you'll see that once you get three experience, you go up a level. So uh, as you go up level, you'll get bonuses. But at the end of the game, whoever has the most experience wins, although there are some experience bonuses for, let's say, having done the most exploration, being the biggest hero, what have you. Those will add to your score at the end. You'll also notice here's a reputation track. Everyone starts with no reputation, but you can have positive or negative reputation uh, depending on the different actions that you take. There are four different spaceships that you can fly. Each of these spaceships comes with the captain, so you can see Picard and Cisco and a couple Klingon captains. They have a deck of cards, which is pretty much, as far as I can tell, identical with the difference being the captain card in each deck has a very different effect. They also come with a a bunch of tiles. These tiles are used in upgrades. Uh, when you go up some of the levels, you'll be able to draw two of them and pick one of them. There's a card that comes that explains what all the upgrades do. And these piles of upgrades are very different and give each of the ships a very unique flavor. You're going to be playing several scenarios over this game, and so basically each scenario is usually starts in the same manner, where ships are going to come out of the wormhole and they're going to be flying around on a board, and this board kind of grows in a cone-shaped method, so new tiles will be placed and added as you discover these, and discovering a new tile will even get you some experience points, and as you move around the map, when you discover new tiles, different things are going to show up on these tiles, so sometimes there might be a planet where you can send an away uh, team mission down to discover that planet. Sometimes you'll run into Dominion star bases or um, uh, Romulan spaceships or like, different planets that you can uh, communicate with or dry docks where you can fix your ship. And each of these spaces is sort of has different rules for it. There is actually a rule card that explains all the different things. Eventually you will even run into Borg cubes, which will have other spaceships with them and have the clicks part of this game. That just basically keeps track of their level. And you'll have to end up, some of these things you will fight, other things you will use diplomacy. And so you're gonna be moving around the board, taking different actions. The game is divided up into several rounds until you re reach an end game condition based on the scenario. And these rounds are broken up into several turns. And each round, players in from least victory experience points to the most are going to pick one of these cards. These cards will determine the turn order for that round. And they also give you a special ability, sometimes one that you can use uh, right away. For example, if you take the five, you immediately draw two new cards. If you take the six once per round, you can take two turns in a row. So they get better as the numbers get bigger. And so players will decide these and draw these. Now the game is going to revolve around data. So here's a board that's placed here. This is the data core. The data core shows you how many movement points it costs to go into different areas and also 
areas you can't go in at all, areas you can move through but can't stop in, etc. But these dice here, there's three types of data in this game. There is red, blue, and gold data. And these data can be gotten through the means of dice or through tokens that you can acquire through different ways. And you can store tokens and use them. Also on each turn you can use a die. And then when you're done you re-roll that die and it becomes a different type of data perhaps. The white data is a wild data. Black data is like hidden mystery data. And then there's even uh, confusing data here. That's like risky and improvisation that you can do. So you're going to be able to use these dice to play your cards. Each player has a deck of cards. Players also have a stack of tokens. They're going to start with one token. A token shows you how many crew members you can have. And then they have a pile of tokens that are in front of them. And these tokens are stacked. So this shows basically the hit points of your captain. It shows your hand size and shows what levels. When you get to level three, you go to the next token. And then you can have two crew members. And then now you, your captain goes up a little bit and your, your hand size is the same. And when you go up to level five, you will get another token. Now you can have three crew members and your hand limit is now six cards. So these, that's what these will do as the game goes by. Um, and you're going to have these cards in your hand. Now there's all sorts of cards and you can use cards during your turn. You can move as far as you want and then you can take one action. An action might be attacking something. An action might be repairing. An action might be uh, sending an away team down to a planet. When you move, you can use any card that says move. And you'll notice that this card, as all the cards, have two parts. The top part, you can just play this for move two. If I use a blue data token that I've saved up, or a die with a blue data thing, or a white die, I can use the bottom part. So I can move four. So cards get better when you use the bottom parts of them. This one here is a move two and a move four. This one is diplomacy too. Diplomacy is like a currency you use to recruit new crew members or to subjugate planets perhaps. But this one becomes a diplomacy five, although it does drop your reputation by one. It's intimidate. Every card can always be used as one attack, one shield, uh, one diplomacy, one move if you discard it. So you always have that option too. And players are going to be going through their whole deck. When one player has no cards left to draw, they can declare the end of the round. Their turn immediately ends, every other player gets one last turn, and then another round starts. And you'll take all your cards, shuffle them, and draw more cards and start the next round. Some spots on the board uh, will allow you to get better cards, and you also can get these uh, advanced cards when you go up in levels. And these cards are just better versions of the cards that are in your deck. Like, for example, this one gives you a red data crystal. And if you use a red data crystal, it gives you long range attack of four. And you can add these, not only will these increase the size of your deck, but they're just really good cards. Like here's take a damage, move four, take a damage and move six. I mean, you might not want to take a damage, but I should mention damage cards because damage cards you will get from battles and maybe from something like that. They go into your hand and they kind of clog your hand up. You can use repair to get rid of them, or you can use emergency repairs, which discards them in your discard pile, but they'll show up again. So you're going to want to get rid of these. Obviously they will hinder what you can do as the game goes by. There are also undiscovered cards. These are cards that also go in your deck, but these are extremely powerful cards. Even the top part requires data to activate and the bottom requires two data. Like this one here requires a red data and one of the black data, like the unknown data. So for example, here, this is great. Repair one and draw two cards, but you have superior engineering. You repair three and draw two cards and then search your ship deck and you summer all of these repair points to repair damage cards you find there. So you can go through your whole deck and get rid of damage if you have it. Even Q shows up as Diplomacy 4 or possibly Diplomacy 8 with these unknown cards. And you'll get these uh, from different places on the map. I mentioned crew cards. Crew cards will show up at different locations. And there's a, a, several of them face up on the table. And they'll be changing from round to round. And players will be able to recruit them. It shows where you can recruit them. It shows how much diplomacy you have to have to recruit them. It basically shows how good that character is. And they all have a special ability that you can use once per round. You'll put your token on it to show that you've used it. And remember, you can only have one crew member at the beginning of the game, but as you go up in levels, you can have more. And they have just different special abilities, like attack one, I mean attack two, or he has attack or shields three. And many of the different characters that you'll recognize, like Federation Officer, um, will show up in this game. Of course, yeah, we got Geordi LaForge. And then they even have 
advanced crew members that will show up in other locations. Like, hey, it's lore, isn't that exciting? And you'll have Klingons and Dominion and Romulans and Vulcans and Borg. Lots of different characters in this game. And some of the characters cost more to get in front of you, but then they will do, they will be much more powerful. Like, hey, seven or nine, look how powerful. An attack five, shields eight. That's some great stuff there. Now, as the game run, comes around, you're going to run into enemy bases or ships or even planets that you have to fight. And fighting is pretty straightforward in this game. You can use cards from your hand to fight. And you, if you have long-range attacks, you basically can kill the enemy before they have a chance to get you. If not, you then have to take the damage that they're going to dish out, which is this number on the side, and block that with shields. Otherwise, you're going to take damage into your hand, which is a bad thing. And then you can do regular damage to them and try to destroy them. If you destroy them, this is how many experience points you get. Uh, like some planets, you can avoid to fight at all, but if you have enough diplomacy, um, most of these guys you don't. So there's special weapons which will do all sorts of damage to you. Or like this one here, uh, takes half damage from regular weapons. And so there are special weapons like photon torpedoes and things like that which can bypass these. And some enemies can only be hurt by specific weapons. So that's pretty much it. Each scenario is going to change how the game's played. You can play totally cooperatively. You can, like I said, work together to destroy a Borg cube. You can add player combat if you want, where player ships can attack each other. There's some scenarios that work better with fewer players. You can even play the game solitaire. There's a lot going on. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how it works. Let's get to my thoughts. Now, first of all, people are going to say, well, how is this different than Mage Knight? Maybe you noticed when you were playing, uh, looking at it. For me, if you've played Mage Knight before, you're going to be able to dive right into this one. They're very similar. I, I, they're not a carbon copy one of another. There are things that change, but there are some where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's the Dragon's Lair. Oh, yeah, I know what that is in Mage Knight. I will say I think the Star Trek theme really overlays and it is better than the Mage Knight theme does. It just works really well, with the exception of the Federation does seem a little bit more bloodthirsty in this game than they might be. I mean, you can, like, decimate a planet if you want to, and it's sometimes very helpful to you. Your reputation goes down. Ah, what do I care? <laughs> You're going around shooting up Romulans right and left in this game with nary a care in the world. This game is an excellent game. I've had a chance to play through it. Uh, I, I, it, it like I said, it immediately brought back Mage Knight. It is a complex game, though. There is a lot going on in this game. However, the game comes with two rule books. It comes with the full rule book here, and you can learn from the full rule book. But it also comes with a walkthrough. And the walkthrough, which is essentially a carbon copy of the one in Mage Knight, but it's a great walkthrough because it says set everything up, Put the cards in, uh, put the tiles in order this way, and here's how you play. They basically explain a little bit how to play. Here's what these things do on these tiles. Boom, boom, boom. I export a new tile. Great. Here's what's on that tile. Here's the rules for that tile. And you learn one thing at a time. So first you learn, hey, this is what a Romulan starbase does. This is what a Dominion starbase does. Oh, this is how I deal with this, a class M planet. This is how I deal with a class L planet. And so by the time you're done with this walkthrough, you find a board cube, oh, game over. And then you move on. Um, and then you can play more and go through the full rule book and find board cube. Uh, and there's a bunch of scenarios in here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different scenarios. Some of them, there's a full cooperation one. There's a solo one. There's a competitive one where you're basically trying to explore as much as possible. Uh, there's uh, some competitive one where you're fighting over controlling research stations. Or you can basically just go through and do what you want to do here. Or you might even, they might even let you kind of basically spend some, they even have a variant where you can basically build at the beginning, draft cards at the beginning and build your deck. See, this game is a deck builder, right? But it's not like other games that you might consider deck building games like Dominion and Thunderstone. This is a slow deck builder. You have a deck of cards and you are using them and as the time goes by, you're slowly adding a few better cards. You're adding some ship tokens that you can use every turn and crew members that you can use every round. And you, you, you start very similar to everybody else, but as time goes by, you're like, all right, I'm going to build for attack. Now I'm going to build for movement here. I'm going to go and explore. And, and really, I love the game for that because you get these cards. You're like, wow, what can I do with these cards? I have multiple options here. I can use the data dice. I can use the data crystals. I want to start saving up a bunch of crystals so I can have a, a wonderful turn. And, and because combat is very straightforward, right? There's no real luck in combat. The luck might be, I'm going to go to this planet. Really bad uh, aliens there, they're going to whoop me up. But, I mean, once you know what the aliens are, 
you can prepare and go in and take them out. You just have to have the right combination of cards and data, chips, and dice. So that's, that's very possible to do. So the game is very thinky and strategic, and I'm going to make these plans. Because of that, the game is long. Like, a short game of this is two hours. A long game can go up to four. It's a lengthy game. Now, it can be shorter with fewer players, and in fact, I prefer to play with three or less players because four just is, I think, one player too many and just kind of lengthens that game out. But there's really so much depth here. And like I said, I feel like the Star Trek universe really comes to life here. Now, they didn't add every character that you might think, and there's, you know, for as many people as in the Star Trek universe, I find it odd that there's a whole lot of Federation officer, Romulan guy, you know, there are some people you'd be like, where is this particular character? And I do like, this is my favorite time period. I like the whole Deep Space Nine slash uh, Next Generation time frame. I, I like that the best. And I like having the Romulans and Dominion and Borg. Borg is one of the best enemies of all time as bad guys. And probably in this game, Borg cubes are a little easier to beat than they were in, in the movies and stuff. But that, that's okay. This is not just a straight reskinning. They they changed it up a little bit. And like I said, the whole going out exploring and sending away teams and learning and discovering, that fits Star Trek so much better to the point where I don't know that I will ever play Mage Knight again. If I want to play that game, I'd rather play this one, the Star Trek one. Also, I want to mention for Star Trek Frontiers that WizKids gets a lot of grief, and rightly so, for their component quality. They do not make the best components. I was very impressed with these. They're still not like stellar but they're very good in fact when i opened the box everything was already punched out and in the, in little trays that came out they were very cool so the dice are good um the data chips are a little odd i might replace those with something else but the the cardboard was good the, the card quality you, there's screenshots but i don't know how they could have done that differently other than you know how hired artists the screenshots are not that distracting and once you have everything set up and all the different tokens, it's good. This is a deep game. It is not for everybody. However, if you're looking for a nice, slow, strategic deck builder where you have some interaction with other players, but it doesn't have to be a lot, and where you can play competitively or even have a good, solid solo game, this is an amazing thing. It's not something I can play all the time, but when I do play it, I have to say I was engrossed the whole time. And I'm sitting there going, I want to level up, I want to level up, you know, because then I can get another card. I can, ooh, I can have another uh, crew member. I, Jordi LaForge, come on board, please, on my Klingon ship. <laughs> so I, I like this. I often tout the praises of another Star Trek game, Star Trek Fleet Captains from WizKids. And I think that one embodies the Star Trek universe as a whole to a T. However, that one is probably not as good of a game as this one. This is a solid strategic game. Even if you don't like Star Trek, I think you could push that aside and say, wow, I just really enjoy the mechanisms here, building my hand of cards, getting these uh, unknown cards and using the, the data chips and using the cubes and things. All this just comes together to make a perfect storm of a wonderfully designed game, Star Trek Frontiers. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.